okay welcome back uh to another video for o level math revision we are continuing with everyday math um uh, here's the next question it says uh in october sala is charged 84.25 dollars for water a tax of eight percent is added to this amount uh calculate the total amount sala is charged for water in october including tax okay so i am asking you to basically increase this amount by eight percent this is the original amount so i'm going to say that the original multiplied by the multiplier is the final so the original is 84.25 the multiplier is 108 percent and the final is x let's call that x So 84.25 into 108%, 90.99 equals to X. The table shows the rates that Sara is charged for her gas and electricity supply. She's charged for a fixed amount each day plus an amount for each unit used. Okay, uh, so there's a cost for each day and that for units used. Sara uses a total of 960 units of gas in the 30 days of November. Okay, calculate the total amount in dollars. So I can convert everything into dollars immediately and say that this is 0.23 multiplied by 30 because it was 30 days. Okay, that's for gas. And 0 0.043 for 960. So I just have to add this up on a calculator and tell you the final answer. And that gives me $48.18. I hope that is the correct answer. Let me just quickly check. Yeah, that is the correct answer. Okay, moving on, it says Sara is charged a total of $30.80 for electricity in the 30 days of November. Calculate the number of units used. So it's basically the same equation, just with a different unknown. So I'm going to say 0.28 into 30 plus 0.16, that's 16 cents, into X equals to $30.80, where X is the number of units. So I've multiplied uh the days by their cost but i don't know the units so i kept that as unknown so i can move this to the other side and say that this is 0.16x 30.80 minus 0.28 into 30 and x would then be divided by 0.16 uh, x would be the result of dividing by 0.16 0.28 into 30 so that gives me 22.4 and then i divide it by 0 0.16 so that gives me 140. That's easy. Then the ne next part is about standard form. I see a lot of uh, parts on standard form. So we've done standard form in paper one. Uh, so we'll sort of go over it again. Standard form is to be honest, easier with paper two because you can you know use a calculator to multiply, divide. You don't need to think about the strategies. It says the amount of electricity generated is measured in gigawatt hours. The table shows information about the amount of electricity generated in different countries. Um, it says this Australia, Japan in 2010 and 2016. Okay, calculate how much more electricity was generated in Japan in uh, in Japan than in Australia in 2016, giving your answer in standard form. Okay, so. 1.03 into 10 power 6 minus 2.43 into 10 power 5. Honestly, I don't need to do anything manually. I just need to get my final answer. And what you should be aware of is that your cal calculator is also ca capable of doing standard form for you. It can you know, sort of convert any answer into standard form if you use the right uh, setup there is a certain setup for that i will have a separate video on that please make sure to subscribe to find that video 
so this is right now 787,000. 787,000. I want to convert it into standard form. So I'm going to move the decimal back and they say that it becomes 7.87 7 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 zeros. So 10 to the power 5. Then it says calculate the percentage increase in electricity generated in Turkey from 2010 to 2016. So I'm going to say that 2.62 into 10 power 5 minus 2.03 into 10 power 5 divided by the original final minus original divided by original. Okay, again, everything needs to be done on the calculator, no manual calculations, you don't need to worry about anything in the, these questions because they're easy. I think I'm getting 29.1%. I will have to check that answer just to be absolutely sure that I'm doing it right. Yes, that is the correct answer. The percentage is already there, so you can just write 29.1. There was a 4% decrease in the amount of electricity generated from Spain uh, from 2013 to 2016. Uh, okay, calculate the amount of electricity generated in 2013 so this is again a question on increase and decrease so i'm going to say that original multiplied by multiplier equals to final so i don't know the original let's call that x i know the final that is in 2016 so spain in 2016 is 2.64 into 10 power 5 and my increase decrease was not four percent so i'm going to say that this is 96 percent okay that gives me 275 thousand gigawatts so there's no need for standard form since the question doesn't say so. So I'm going to leave it like that. All the answers are correct. Let's move on uh, to the next question. It says Jasmine buys a hotel, a family holiday in India. Here is some information about the cost. In October, Jasmine pays a deposit of 12% of the total cost. She pays the rest of the total cost in December. Calculate the amount she pays in December. So I'm going to first calculate 12% of the total cost. Again, using your calculator for everything, $270. Uh, so remaining is, I, I could have just said that the remaining is 88%, but it's absolutely fine to just go on and calculate as well. 1918. It is find the ratio of cost of flights to cost of hotel. So cost of flies is 700 and cost of hotels is 1550 giving your answer in its simplest form. So 700 to 1550. Now, a lot of people end up being confused that how, need, how do we need to reduce and so on. The simple idea is that this honestly means 700 divided by 1550. And to be honest, your calculator will turn out to answer in fractions. So you can keep that fraction and say that this is 14 into 31. And that is the simplest form. I cannot simplify it further. 14 to 31. Let me just check if I took the numbers correctly. 1550, yeah. Okay. A to 14 to 31. See? And, and I just need to write it and then, you know, sort of put it on a calculator and do it. I honestly also think that this question is sort of redundant in uh, with, with today's calculators uh, because you can you know sort of punch the numbers directly and sort of find, give me a final answer without having to reduce anything manually since it doesn't say any working required so uh, that's pretty much it 
Jasmine changes three fifty dollars into rupees. Uh, the exchange rate is this. On holiday, she spends nineteen five hundred rupees. She changes the breast back to dollars at the same exchange rate. Calculate the amount of money she receives. Uh, giving your answer correct to the nearest cent. So dollar to rupees was seventy one point six. I took three fifty dollars. Let's see how many rupees I got. How many rupees do I get? Three fifteen to seventy one point six two five zero six zero. I spent a lot of it. So two five zero six zero minus nineteen thousand five hundred. That's five five six zero. What do I want to do? I want to change it back at the same exchange rate. So dollar to rupees again. One to seventy one point six five five six zero to y and 71.6y equals to 5560 5560 divided by 71.5 calculate to the nearest cent so i think 77.76 i hope that's the correct answer that is not it's six five uh let's check it did you mess up our calculations a little bit five five six zero divided by seventy one point six no, I messed it up on my calculator, I think. 77.65, that's the final answer, yeah. Okay, this next question is about standard form again. It says, calculate how many more tourists visited India than Kenya. So, number of tourists is here. What I simply need to do is I need to subtract. I'm going to put all of this on my calculator and just subtract. Uh, I don't need to do any of this manually. So I do that and I get about one, three, 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 and four zeros. So that's about 1.333 into 10 power. How many is it? Uh, decimal places one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven, send so power seven. Let's just calculate the average amount spent per tourist in China in 2016. So I can just say that this is simply China's total spending divided by its number of tourists. So I'm going to divide by the number of tourists and say that this is what I'm calculating. Let's quickly do that. Again, my calculator can pretty much take care of anything uh, related to calculations. I don't need to do anything manually or you know sort of simplify anything it's 748.735 which is 749 dollars that's the correct answer yeah that's the correct answer then it says from 2014 to 2016 the total amount spent by tourists in madagascar 2014 to 2016 okay total amount spent in madagascar 9.13 into 10 power 5 Increased by 23.5%. So this is the 2016 value, which means that this is the final value. The original value is missing. Calculate the amount. So I'm going to say that original, then this time the multiplier is what? 123.5%. And the final amount is this. Again, my calculator can handle all of this calculation. I don't need to do anything manually. I just need to punch it on a calculator and I'm going to get my final answer. Okay, that's seven three nine two seven.
seven one so seven three nine two seven one uh point two five five one i can run that uh, i can write that in standard form or i can write that in exact number that's my call i can also i also have to check a little if i can round it off to three significant figures let's see what the marking scheme says it has rounded off correct to three significant figures why because of general requirement of the question um so i'm going to write seven three nine thousand basically okay uh moving on to the next question now okay let's see this it says in 2020 the running cost for frederick's car uh was 5200 dollars 28 percent of the running cost was spent on insurance uh three over 20 three over 25 of the running cost was spent on maintenance 740 dollars of the running cost was spent on tax the remainder of the running cost was spent on petrol calculate the amount frederick spent on petrol so i will have to calculate each of those so insurance first insurance is simply 28 percent of 5200 let's calculate what that is so 0.28 into 5200 gives me 1456 then there's maintenance That's 3 out of 25. So 3 out of 25 of 5200. Six twenty-four. Then there is tax. That's $740 straight off. Okay. So remaining is therefore I will have to subtract all of these from 5200. So 5200 minus 1456 minus 624 minus 740. And if it's 2380. Okay, so that is the man that he spent on petrol. let's check if that is the correct answer yeah that is the correct answer okay in 2021 the tax increased by 1.5 percent so there was an increase in tax uh calculate the tax in 2021 the old tax was 740 dollars so i'm just going to say that 740 dollars multiplied by the multiplier 101.5 percent is the final value then That's 751.1, which is the final value. And since this is exact, I don't think I need to round this off to three significant figures. Yeah. Okay. In January, the cost of petrol is 2.20 liters. Find the cost of 38.7 liters of petrol. I think that's fairly simple. Just multiplication. You get 85, uh, sorry, 85.14. The answer is the average amount of petrol Frederick, Frederick uh, car uses is 7 liters per 100 kilometers. In January, he spends 215.14. Six zero on petrol, two point two zero dollars is the cost. Calculate the number of kilometers. So I can just quickly first find out if that he spent two one five point six zero, and the cost of one liter was this. That quickly tells me how many liters he spent. So that's about ninety eight liters. So then I can sort of create a ratio where I compare liters to kilometers. It says seven liters for hundred kilometers. I have 98 liters. How many kilometers must I have driven? So that's 9800 divided by 7 when I cross multiply. And that gives me 
1400 1400 kilometers then it says in january the cost of petrol increases to 2.24 dollars per liter calculate the percentage increase so the percentage change is basically final minus original divided by the original multiplied by 100 It's very small increase. It says 1.82%. Okay. Uh, that is the next question then. Just checking if my answer is correct. Yes, it is. Okay. Then that's the next question. We are into June 22 and the second variant. We have three more papers to go. Uh, in 2021, the cost of posting a letter was 84 cents. The company posts 1950 letters. Find the cost in dollars. So I'm going to say that's 0.84 multiplied by 1950. 0.84 because I need it in dollars into 1950. And that gives me 1638. Then in 2022, the cost of posting a letter is 96 cents. So it's gotten up uh calculate the increase in the cost so 96 minus 84 divided by 84 now some of you may want to know if i need to convert it into dollars or not the idea is that if you are keeping it in cents both in the numerator and in the denominator it shouldn't make a difference uh it gives me 14.2857 which is 14.3 percent Okay, then the cost of posting a letter is 96 cents. 15% discount when monthly postage is more than $1,000. Company A posts 1,200 letters in one month. Company B posts fewer letters than company A in the same month. Company A and company A, B each pay the same amount to post their letters that month. Okay, find the number of letters company B posts in that month. So let's first find out that if I am getting a discount. So I am going to say that this gets multiplied by 0 0.96. So 1200 into 0 0.96. What does that give me? It gives me 1152. Okay, so that's company A. It's going to get a discount. And that discount is basically 15%. So I'm going to say that the original value is 1152. Since the discount is 15%, I'm going to multiply it by the multiplier, which is 85% in this case, so 11.52 into 0.85. And I get 979.2. So that's the amount that company A is paying. It says company A and company B each pay the same amount to post their letters that month. Now, company B has posted fewer letters. Now, if I'd, it, the only way that I can pay the same amount is that either it was uh you know posting the same amount of letters and then getting the same discount so if it's not uh posting the same amount of letters but it's posting fewer letters so i can then confidently say that b is not getting a discount so it's just the number of letters multiplied by 0 0.96 equals to 979.2 so 979.2 that gives me 1020 so that fits my question as well it's less than the man that a is paying that is indeed the correct answer 1020 let's check yes okay then in 2022 the cost of paying a parcel with a mass of 1 kg for or less is 4.60 dollars the cost increases by $1.10 for each additional 0.5 kgs and the cost of posting a, posting a parcel with a mass of 3.5 kgs. Okay. Uh, okay, for each additional 0.5 kgs. 
so 4.60 dollars is for 1 kg so 1.5 would be 4.60 plus 1.1 2 would be 4.60 plus 2 times 1.1 so you see the pattern there what I just have to do is I just have to take the additional kgs see how many 0.5s are there and then multiply it with 1.1 okay that's four times 1.1 and 3.5 should be 4.60 plus five times 1. okay don't do it directly with proportions because when one amount is fixed and the other amount is variable proportions don't give you the correct answer Ten point one dollars okay the cost of posting each parcel increases by 7.2 percent after the increase the cost of posting a parcel is 13.40 dollars calculate the original cost of posting the parcel again simple idea original missing x the multiplier is 107.2 percent and the final is 113.40 dollars so 13.4 divided by 1.072 Okay, that's 12.50, dollars Okay, moving quickly on to the second last question of our revision video. It says, Abid works in an office for five days each week. Each day he works for 8.15, from 8.15 until 12.40, and then from 13.30 until 17.00. Uh, 100 work out the total time of it works in one week okay so every day he works from this to this then from this to that and he works five days a week so first i'm going to have to calculate the amount that uh, the time that he works for see i've always told you that if i find it easier to just you know reach to the nearest hour first and then go accordingly so 45 minutes here and then 12 uh, then 10 11 and 12 so that's three hours and then i have another 40 minutes so again i've sort of crossed uh, that barrier then i'm going to first find out all the hours and then do it 1400 that's 30 minutes and then working till 15 16 and 17 so that's another three hours okay so i see six hours clear cut but there's a lot of minutes to be added together as well so 30 plus 40 plus 45 gives me how many minutes it gives me 115 minutes so i can't write 115 minutes i will have to again convert that into hours and minutes so that becomes seven hours and i'm going to subtract 60 from this 115 minus 60 and that leaves me with 55 minutes so so seven hours and 15 55 minutes for one day let's uh multiply that by uh five days how much i am i getting 75 is 35 so that's 35 days 35 hours sorry and then 55 into 5 gives me another 275 minutes now 275 minutes is needs to be converted into hours so i'm going to start calling out the multiples of 60 so 60 times 1 is 60 60 times 2 is 120 times 3 is 180 times 4 is 240 so i think i need to add four hours here and subtract 240 from here so that leaves me with 35 minutes so that's the amount of time that he spends in spends working all week okay uh then 
Abidance 4.20, 14.20 dollars per hour. He is given a pay increase of 5%. So 14.20 multiplied by 105%. That gives me 14.91. Then it says each month Abid divides his earnings between rent, bill and that. Uh, that's like the question that we've done before, giving an answer in its simplest form. So he wants the ratio from rent, bills and savings. Okay, now you have three categories. So you might find it a little, little tricky to uh, sort of come up with uh, a ratio because you won't be able to do the entire thing with the calculator directly. So let's first calculate the rent. Okay, I will have to first calculate his earnings and then sort of divide it. Or I can just use the fractions i don't need the total earnings okay so let's do it directly i don't need i don't know the fraction for uh i don't know the fraction for savings so first can i find out that this is a three mark question so it's going to take you a little bit can i say that this first fraction is 20 over 100 which means that this is basically 1 over 5 okay this is automatically 3 over 8 and the rest of this earnings are saved so what are the rest of the earnings can i say that the savings are basically uh, 1 minus 1 fifth and 3 eighth why because fractions add up to 1 if they are expressed like that it's the same case with probability so i'm going to do this on my calculator and say that the next fraction that i have is 17 over 40. So what i need to do is i need to have rent bills and savings in a ratio form okay so i'm going to first write it down i'm going to say that this one fifth three eighth and 1740 how do you simplify ratios three ratios together you multiply them with the lcm of the denominators so i can clearly see that the lowest common multiple of the denominator is going to be 40 itself so i'm just going to multiply everything by 40. so i get what 8 15 and 17 so his division is in the ratio 8 15 and 17 let's check yes that is the correct answer so we've also done it like that okay then it says abad invests 2400 dollars in a saving account for four years the account pays simple interest so simple interest is prt Per year, at the end of four years, he receives a total of $153.60 in interest. So $153.60, calculate the value of R. So the principal was $2,400. I don't know the R. Uh, so that's R percent. So R over 100 multiplied by time is four years. Let's quickly calculate that. 153.6 into 100 divided by 4 divided by 2,400. So that's 1.6 so it was 1.6 percent okay this is always invest some money in a different savings account account and pays compound interest at this at the end of the five years there is 1822.38 in the account calculate the amount of money are invested in his account so the original amount is missing so the formula for comp compound interest is amounted end into p1 plus r power t so i think this question is fairly simple then 1822.38 i don't know p let's call that as the unknown so that's 1.4 percent and that's power 5 now it's a simple calculation i can just put again everything on a calculator as it is in the division i can write bracket 1 plus 1.4 percent power 5 and that gives me 1699.98 which means that it must have been 1700 dollars yes that is the correct answer
On to the last question for this video. Let's uh, do that quickly. It says Hala travels from London to Marseille by train. Uh, she must change trains in Paris. The journey from London to Paris. This is a question on time. We haven't seen one on time, so that sort of completes the idea. The journey from Paris to Marseille is this. London to Paris is this. The local time in Marseille and Paris is one hour ahead of the local time in London. Okay, so they are already ahead one hour. So we will start with London's time and then try to sort of increase uh, yeah, or, or depends on what the question is. Uh, okay. Uh, complete the timetable for Hala's journey. So what would be the time in her watch or clock, whatever uh, she was looking at when she was departing London? Remember that London is one hour ahead and she wants to arrive in paris at 1650 okay so i am first going to reduce the journey time from here and i'm going to say that she's going to go back two hours and 28 minutes so that's 1450 first and then 28 minutes when subtracted gives you 1422 remember that this is paris time if paris is one hour ahead that means london is one hour behind so this time must have been 1322 for her why because the time difference needs to be accommodated then martial and paris are at the same time so then she doesn't need to do anything three hours and 38 when 30 minutes so she just needs to add up so when she adds three hours what she, does she get she gets 13 uh, 22 3, 1. then she needs to add another 30 minutes now it just can't become 61 so this becomes what this becomes 2301 i've added 60 minutes to it okay let's check if we have the right answer yeah 2301 and 1322 okay work out how long Halo waits in paris before the train to marcel so that's the those are the two times that you need to calculate a difference for again i've told you before that i find it easier if you just you know go to the nearest hour first so that's 10 minutes and then you move on accordingly she waits for one hour then two hours and then another 31 minutes so that's two hours and 41 minutes Then she says the exchange rate in dollars is this, the exchange rate in euros is this, uh, in pounds is this, and dollar to pounds is this, and dollar to euros is this. She changes two fifty dollars into or uh, two fifty pounds into euros. Uh, she receives two ninety euros. Calculate the value of R. So okay, one of the exchange rates is missing. So I need to have an exchange rate that gives me the conversion between pounds and euros. So I've done this before, I've told you this before that um, you can, you know, sort of write, write everything in, a, in an order and then, you know, whatever you need to eliminate needs to be in the center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put dollars in the center. So I get that I get and I, I want euros to pounds. So or it could be pounds to euros. It's absolutely fine. Let's just keep pounds to euros. Okay, let's move dollar to the center. So 0 0.75 one dollar euros is I don't know one to R. Okay, so right now it's 0 0.75 to R. That's pound to euros. So pound to euros is 250 pounds gives you 290 euros. So since i have my original conversion rate i can just then cross multiply and say that 0.75 into 290 equals to 250 into r so r is 0 0.87 check if that's the right answer yes it is the right answer Joseph books a holiday for three people. The holiday costs $420 per person. Joseph pays a deposit of 
uh, of the total cost, calculate the amount that Joseph pays. So that's simple. Three into four twenty is the total cost, and then twenty percent of that. Two fifty two. Joseph pays a total of 85.68 for the airport parking for eight days. Okay, this price includes a reduction of 15% of the full price for booking early. Calculate the full price booking for one day. So I'm first going to convert that into one day so that I have the right number that I want to go with. 85.68 divided by 8. That's 10.71. So this one is 15% less than. So can I say that this is the final amount? The original amount is missing and I know that there was a reduction. So there was 85%. That's the multiplier. So original multiplied by multiplier is final, right? That's what I always use when I'm calculating this. So 10.71 divided by 0 0.85. 12.6. Okay, that brings us to the end of this video. I hope this was productive. Please make sure to like and subscribe for more videos in the future. Thank you.